Tuesdays with Alvin once again. We have a bunch of new pens to show off, a entire new pen brand to show off, which we are very excited about. Uh, today we'll also be doing a live swatching of all of Leishla's favorite inks. Leishla is one of our fantastic employees who specializes in all of our planners and notebooks. Um, and she's got great taste in inks, so definitely stay tuned for the end of the show uh, where we're gonna swatch all of her favorites live on stream. Of course, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, definitely let us know in the chat, and me or Brendan, our moderator today, is going to answer them for you. Awesome, how's everybody doing? Go ahead and wait for just one moment for people to tune in, and we'll get started with all the new product here at Atlas. Sweet. All right. Let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. So, let me flip my camera real quick. It'll work. There we go. Awesome. Let me tilt this down. What's up? So consistent. <laughs> You're always here right away. I'm super happy to see it. Okay. So, we have a brand new pen brand to our shop. This is Penlux from Taiwan. Penlux specializes in making incredibly high quality resin fountain pens at an affordable price point. What we have right here is the Masterpiece Grand. It is the largest model offered by Penlux. Shaped very similarly to like a Mont Blanc 149, a Sailor King of Pen, very similar overall profile. You have a brass clip that's gold plated with the little roller right there at the end. So it's very easy to slip in and out of a pocket. On the cap band here, you have very simple pen lux engraving, very simple cap band. And then the pen itself, you've got the iconic Yovo number no. six nib made in Germany. If you guys aren't familiar, the Yovo number no. six nib is the most popular nib on the market uh, for pen brands from around the world. So when you see a Yovo nib on a pen, you can tell that it's going to be good quality. One of my favorite features of the Pen Lux is the very large piston filling mechanism. I know it can be really hard to see, but you can see the piston going up and down this pen. So this pen allows you to fill up ink directly from an ink bottle, like one of these, which we'll be swatching later. And you get quite a large capacity out of this pen in particular. You can see that uh, you've got about this much capacity for ink. I would guess it's about one and a half milliliters. Once again, this is the Masterpiece Grand. Uh, starting at $176, they do go up to $192, depending on the finish that you're picking. Um, but this one in particular is $176. So let's go ahead and go through all of the colorways for the Masterpiece Grand. Here is one of my favorite colors. This one is a very nice slate blue, stone blue. with all rhodium appointments or palladium. So you can see this one has that stainless steel nib that has no plating as the last one had a uh, yellow plating for the coloring. Yeah, you would be 100% wrong there. <laughs> That's cool though, no one's hating on that. This one, you can definitely see the uh, ink window or kind of uh, piston mechanism a little bit clearer. Awesome. And then we also have it in a very gorgeous green with rose gold appointments. So the clip, the cap band, the little ring on the piston knob and of course, oh, not the nib actually. So all rose gold, but then you get a yellow gold nib, which I think still looks very fitting. I'm a big sucker for green and gold. Pen on me today, of course, is green and gold. Okay. 
very comfortable in the hand as you can see even though it's a pretty large pen it doesn't feel oversized and because it's so lightweight being made entirely out of resin it's very comfortable in the hand especially for longer writing sessions uh, Nero Lotus and Lear uh, this is the Penlux Masterpiece Grand um, this one is $176 great questions y'all I believe you can get them in any nib sizes. We're already pretty low on stock of these, but we will be restocking soon. So if you don't see the nib size that you want in stock, go ahead and sign up for that restock notification on the product listing, and we'll let you know once they're back in stock right away. Sweet. I've got a couple more here. This one is your classic piano black with rhodium. Yeah, that green one's gorgeous. Might be one of my favorites. Once again, this is the Penlux Masterpiece Grand Fountain Pen. Luis uh, Herrera. What inks are you typically using with your pens? Let us know in the chat. All of the ones, all the colorways that I've been showing off right now are available on atlasstationers.com for $176. All right, stepping up here is an example of one of the solid resin Masterpiece Grands. This particular colorway is called Starry Night very obvious to see where it was inspired by so as you can see I'll go ahead and zoom in really beautiful detailed swirling of course every single one is going to be unique since they are all poured individually but I really like this one it's got like this perfectly circular swirl here which is quite uncommon to see so this particular model is looking pretty good Uh, Pope, uh, great question. Are the nibs interchangeable? So this uses a Yovo number six size nib. So you can interchange these nibs. I don't know if Penlux sells them. Uh, we don't sell them, unfortunately. But if you can get any Yovo number six size nib, uh, for example, if you have any Monteverdes, any Conklins, any Mayoras, Leonardos, I mean, so many brands use this nib, uh, quite easy to switch them out. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch that nib securely, twist the pen body, and that whole nib unit comes out. So this, very easy to interchange. It just has to be Yovo number six. If it's not a Yovo number six, say it's like a Bach number six or a Schmidt number six, um, basically what you'll do is you'll remove just the nib, keep the feet in there, and then you may be able to fit that nib. Um, the fitment might not be perfect, but it should work. $176. Thanks for that in the chat. You've tried both ink bottles and that you uh, pre-fill as well. Uh, Luis, I would definitely recommend sending us an email, uh, info at atlasstationers.com, and we can help you further. You're always so nervous to change the actual nibs. It can be intimidating, but let me show you the easiest way to change out a nib. This is not true for all nibs, so you definitely have to make sure that uh, you're doing it for the right uh, pen. Anything with a Yovo number six, like this pen here, you can always tell by the sizing, of course, that is the iconic number six. And whenever you see this particular engraved uh, pattern for the scroll work, you can be confident in knowing that it's a Yovo number six. Bach and Schmidt don't have that same pattern. So what you want to do to remove the nib, you want to wrap your index finger underneath on the feed. So this plastic piece is called the feed. Wrap your index finger underneath, put your thumb flat on top, gripping securely, and then twist the pen body or the grip section. Don't twist the nib because you can actually twist it out of place and even warp it if you're being too strong with your grip. So what we're going to do is just hold it securely, not super tight, 
grab our pen body and twist. It's gonna come straight out. Now you can replace that whole unit. If you wanna replace just the nib and feed and keep the housing in there, you can grip it all the same and just pull. I'm not gonna do that with this one. I don't wanna wear down the components since this is a brand new pen, but you can do that too. You just wanna make sure you pull straight because if you pull up or down at an angle, you may break something. So just be careful with that. If it uh, helps you guys out, definitely use like silicone gloves or just some grippy material to help you grip the pen and the nib. Once again, this is the Penlux Masterpiece Grand in Starry Night. All right, and coming towards the end of our Penluxes, this one is the limited edition Cloud Bay. So this one is a frosted clear acrylic demonstrator with gold appointments. You can kind of tell that they really found a lot of inspiration from like the 1911 large demonstrator from Sailor. Quite similar in terms of quality, but absolutely gorgeous in its own right. Can you show us how they write? Unfortunately, all the pens I have in front of me today are all live inventory, so I can't ink them up. But this uses a Yovo number six nib, which is pretty standard across the industry. So there's not going to be any surprises with the riding line or riding experience. This one here is engraved with the numbering. So it is limited to 388 units worldwide. So in front of me, I have number 144. Uh, Kermit, have any one with silver? Yeah, I've got two models here with silver trim. Uh, this one is the Deep Sea, and then this one is called uh, just black. So this one's black, this one is the Deep Sea. Definitely check out the available nib sizing on atlasstationers.com. We're running out pretty quick since this is a new brand to us. A lot of our customers are very excited to try it out, but we are going to start carrying these every day. So sign up for restock notifications if you can't find what you're looking for on our website. That way, as soon as it's back in stock, you'll get notified ASAP. Awesome. Okay, and I've got one other model from Penlux to show off. This one here is called the Penlux Delgado. So the Delgado is a slightly smaller, slightly slimmer size, as we can see here. It's um, about a centimeter shorter, maybe not quite a full centimeter, maybe like 0 0.7, 0 .7, yeah, 0 0.7 or so millimeters taller. It's definitely a fair amount thinner. You actually get the same clip, which is nice, the clip with the little roller and then a totally different cap band. So let's go ahead and go into that. So this one has a larger cap band, still says Penlux and it's very minimal. It doesn't have any embellishments. So quite beautiful and minimal. You still get that number six size nib. And this particular one does come with a rose gold color nib, which is cool to see. So this one, the trim does match the nib. And, uh, showing this one in the hand, let's go ahead and compare it to the Masterpiece Grand. Uh, this one is the uh, Penlux Delgado. Uh, I can't remember the name of the colorway. Uh, Brendan and will get that for you in the chat. And here is the Masterpiece. You can see a fair bit larger, but they're equally comfortable in the hand. They pretty much have the same profile in terms of length. Obviously, this one's just a hair shorter. Same number six size nib, so you're just as far away from the paper. So if you want a bigger pen, go with the Masterpiece Grand. If you're cool with the smaller pen, maybe stick with the Delgado. Awesome. So that was Penlux from Taiwan. Iconic cigar shaped resin pens, that Yovo number no. six stainless steel nib and a piston filler. Starting at $136 for the Delgado, going up to $192 or $176 for the Masterpiece Grand. 
and up to $192 for some of the more special finishes. Mario, thank you, they are gorgeous. We just uploaded our in-house photography for all of these pens on our website. So if you want a closer look at any of the pens, definitely check out atlasstationers.com and make sure when you guys check out, use the discount code TikTok and you'll get 10% off your whole order, which is great to see. There are a couple of exclusions, so keep that in mind. You can check those exclusions. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, never mind. You uh, you can use the code TikTok if you get inks or notebooks or anything, but unfortunately, Penlux will not apply for that 10% discount, but they're at a pretty good price, so you're not missing out on too, too much. All right, let's go ahead and move these to the side. Next up, we have the first colorway of the year from Esterbrook. We have the Esterbrook SD Petrified Forest. So the Petrified Forest starts at $175. What you get is their most iconic cigar-shaped fountain pen that is inspired by the Arizona landscape along the famous Route 66 in the United States. So this pen in particular is inspired by the petrified forest, petrified um, kind of color of wood and the Arizona landscape. Oh, you've got this one in your cart. That's dangerous. I'm about to make you buy it right now. <laughs> what you get is a beautiful Esterbrook known for its iconic styling and very minimal branding. As you can see here, it just says Esterbrook around the bottom of the cap. There's no cap band. You get a very elegant, simple clip, still very high quality, sprung brass, feels pretty secure. And you get that Yovo number six nib with the Esterbrook Clover engraving, which is always beautiful to see. And of course, this pen comes with a standard international converter. So you are ready to write with cartridges or bottled ink right away. Uh, Kermit, great question. If you go to the specials section of our website, atlasstationers.com, go to the section getting started and you'll see our personal recommendations for your favorite pen. Uh, Nero, yeah, man. So Delgado, cap off, in writing position. User uh, 1795, definitely stop in. We are open Monday through Friday, nine to five. And we also are open on Saturday from 10 to two. Nero, good stuff. It's a great pen. You'll like it a lot. That Yovo number six nib is super reliable. One of the bulletproof options in the industry. Okay, going back to this real quick. So one of the main features of Esterbrook is you actually have a spring-loaded inner cap. So if you guys can see that inside there, you can see you've got your main cap here, which creates an airtight seal around the threading. And then this inner cap right there on the inside, that little piece of white plastic, creates a watertight seal around just the nib and feed. So when I'm putting this cap on, you guys can see I have to push because it's spring loaded. So I have to push and then twist. And that is just engaging the spring on the inside here. Super simple mechanism, but very ingenious from Esterbrook. What this does is it guarantees a watertight seal around that nib and feed so that this pen will stay wet for an extended period of time. You don't have to worry about it drying out, especially if you are using drier permanent inks. Uh, Andre, could one get a pen with the specific nib that flexes, um, which usually doesn't come with one? Are you talking about a nib separately from the pen, or are you just looking for a recommendation for a flexible fountain pen? Let me know in the chat. This is the oversized Esterbrook. So as you can see here, once again, it's a little bit larger. Some of the key differences with the oversized SD is that you can't post this guy. So. Posting is when you put the cap on the back of the pen. You can't do that with the oversized, but it makes sense because the oversized is much bigger and it feels very comfortable in the hand. A cool thing about the oversized versus the standard SD is that the grip sections are actually identical. So as you guys can see here, the grip sections are the same size. So even if you like a larger pen with a larger kind of stature, you'll still have a very comfortable grip section if your hands aren't that big. 
Both of these pens come in silver trim and gold trim. So if you like the oversized, but you want gold trim, you can get that. Conversely, if you want the regular size SD with the silver trim, you can get that too. So I just got here, these two to show off. Once again, uh, these are available starting at $175. If you go for one of the custom nib grinds that Esterbrook offers, uh, it's gonna start at $202. There's just an extra price bump to basically account for the nib grinders, uh, typical charge for a nib grind. So if you're looking for those, I would highly recommend it. The nib grinds are awesome and they charge literally just as much as you would charge, you know, or you would get charged at a pen show for a nib grind. So it's a great deal. Sweet. Once again, y'all, this was the Esterbrook SD Petrified Forest in the regular size and the oversized. All right. Andre, I would look into the Yovo Elastic Nib. I don't know where you could get them separately, um, but that would be a good place to start for flexible nibs that can fit on your pens without any trouble. So here I have the newest colorways for the Narwhal Original Plus. These are a special edition um, in the Matria white and also the Lavina black. So let's go through the white one here real quick. What you get is a beautiful kind of very nice milky white cap and grip section as well as piston knob. And you get all rose gold appointments on the clip, the cap band that says Narwhal there. Interesting that they didn't go for their name change. Um, interesting move. And then we have a matching rose gold nib. All of these number six size stainless steel nibs are made in-house by Narwhal. So it's great to see a brand new company, uh, you know, really taking charge in quality control and creating their own nibs in-house. They do a fantastic job. Really great riders out of the box. And of course, this is a piston filler or a uh, vacuum filler rather. Just ordered the Delgado. That's what's up, Nero. Congrats, man. Happy new pen day. So this is a vacuum filler. So you guys have probably seen this in all of our viral TikTok videos, but you've got a great filling mechanism where basically as you push down this vacuum, what you're doing is you're creating a vacuum in this chamber here. And as you get to here, you can see it tapers out a little bit. You release that vacuum and Basically, the pen will suck in anything that's soaking in the nib uh, to replace that vacuum. You have all of the inks that I mentioned last week. <laughs> that's a lot of inks. That's good on you. <laughs> I'm about to swatch seven more today, so definitely stay tuned. All right, so that was the Matria White. This one here I have is the Lavina Black. So same deal, beautiful piano black resin, rose gold appointments. Number six size, stainless steel nib made in-house with that iconic narwhal engraving and narwhal icon. And once again, this is a vacuum filler. Great for traveling, great for artists. Great for anybody that wants huge ink capacity. Great bang for your buck, especially because these are special editions, but they don't uh, they don't cost any more money than the standard original plus. So the Narwhal original plus special edition is still fifty five dollars. So a killer deal with some rose gold appointed pens at just fifty five dollars. In house nib huge capacity, high quality components, all for 55 bucks. It's an absolutely killer deal. So you can find these in the new arrival section on our website, atlasstationers.com. Uh, you guys can also go to the Tuesdays with Alvin page on atlasstationers.com under the specials tab. And you can see anything that I show off week to week on my live stream. Cool. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and flip this camera real quick. 
this. So that was all of the new pens that we have for this week. If you guys have any questions about those pens or you wanna see them again, just let me know. I'm more than happy to pop them out. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into the next section of our live stream where we are going to be swatching uh, seven of Leishla's favorite inks of all time. I'm super excited for this. You guys seem to really enjoy the swatches that we did last week. Um, so let's go with round two. I just realized that I forgot to grab some stuff. Let me get someone to uh, grab those for us. If you guys have any questions, let me know right now. So I'm gonna take a little pause here. <laughs> How's everybody's day been going? Let me see if I missed any questions. Hey Phil, could you do me a favor? Could you grab me a bunch of swatches and a bunch of Q-tips and paper towels? Sorry. <laughs> Love the swatches. I'm glad to hear. Uh, Davis, what's your favorite ink brand? That's really hard to say definitively. Um, in terms of like all of the colors and kind of the brand overall, um, I really love Oroshi Zuku. Uh, Oroshi Zuku is Pilot's premium tier of ink. Um, they, all of the colors from Oroshi Zuku are inspired by Japanese uh, nature and um, you know really popular things in Japanese culture uh, so they just do a really beautiful job with their inks and I really appreciate them for that thank you my favorite new brand has definitely been wearing ghoul though uh, just really killing the game it's great to see a new brand get such a strong head start um, so I really appreciate wearing ghoul as well uh, Lear says what is your favorite blue? Um, my favorite everyday blue is probably Oroshi Zuku Ama Iro. Uh, it's the turquoise from Oroshi Zuku. I use that in my vanishing point almost exclusively. Uh, it's a really fun, bright blue that isn't unprofessional. And it has the very slightest red sheening just around the edges that really elevates the ink and kind of lifts it off of the page, if that makes sense. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Um, have you heard of Rider's Blood? Of course, I was one of the guys that voted for Rider's Blood when it was on the Reddit kind of uh, Diamine tournament thing that they have going on every year. I believe that might be going on right now. I'm not sure. So if you guys aren't subscribed to the Fountain Pen subreddit, it's a great resource and community for Fountain Pen people, especially if you don't know anyone in real life. Um, super friendly people over on that subreddit. So you should check it out. Of course, we're not affiliated with the subreddit in any way. So if you see something on there, you can't blame us. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the swatches, y'all. I've got everything I need thanks to Phil. Shout out to Phil for making up for my shortcomings. <laughs> he just saluted me. All right, let me switch my camera real quick, y'all. Oh, whoa. Going crazy. Uh, do you know if they have a green that gives that feel? Uh, what feel are you kind of describing, Lear? That's a very specific uh, request. <laughs> a green that looks like rider's blood? Um, I'm not sure how to answer that, but let me, let me know. Klingon ink, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay, so we are doing Leishla's favorite inks. I don't have every single one of them to swatch, so I just pulled out the two swatches that we already had made for those inks for the, the ones that I can't finish. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started with Jacques Herbon Amethyst de L'Oreal. If you wanted to show this, this is that Accenture Vienna Diamond. With oh, like 40 plus let's diamonds. do it. All right, guys, I'm actually going to take a step back. No, we're going to do it. Let's open it up. Let's do a live unboxing. Okay, I just got a very, very special pen in right now. So let's take a step back. Check this out, y'all. This may be one of the most expensive fountain pens that you have ever gazed upon. This is a very exclusive piece from Waldman. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Be very delicate with this here. As you can see, we have a gorgeous, natural wood lacquer box the little button right here let's go ahead and pop that open oh my god look at that 
What was the name of this one again? Etcetera Vienna Diamond Lady. So that one has over 40 diamonds wow. in the clip. So this is the Etcetera Vienna Diamond Lady. Diamond Lady. Diamond Lady. This is a higher tier version of this pen that's available from Esterbrook. But check this out. What we have on this Waldman is 40 real diamonds around the top finial here and all down the clip here. Look at that, an absolute gorgeous piece, hand engraved from Waldman and then lacquered. So you can see they engrave through the lacquer and then they put a clear coat of lacquer on top to kind of smooth it out, but it's still got a nice texture on it. Waldman is entirely made in Germany. They specialize in crafting products using 925 sterling silver. They don't only use 925 sterling silver though. This one here, we have beautiful rose gold components. Rose gold grip section and the 18 karat number five size nib, it looks like. Oh, there's actually 43 diamonds to be exact. Look at that. 18 karat gold nib with the Waldman engraving and inscription. I don't believe there is any other colorway alternatives um, for this model, but we have it available on atlasstationers.com for $3,200. With a pen of this caliber, we always encourage our customers to reach out to us with any questions you may have. Wow, an absolutely gorgeous piece. Let's go ahead and zoom in one more time on this cap. Yeah, I wish too. This would be a great way to, um, you know, this would be like a great engagement gift or a wedding gift, just encrusted in diamonds. Yeah, so we're hoping to get them in. If, if I got this instead of a wedding ring, reason, you know, there was a delay on them, and then that would be great. I'm also, you know, yeah. a guy, so traditionally we don't really get rings like that. Yeah. That's okay, though. Wow, absolutely gorgeous. Awesome. Standard international cartridge and converter, by the way. Of course, it a pen at this price point. It's going to come with it, so you don't got to worry about that. Oh, beautiful. Be All right. Crazy. Yeah, we, we, what we a special treat. So, yeah, Let's go ahead and covered, so. put this away. Yeah, sorry for the delay, but yeah, once we get them in, we'll, we'll basically shoot out a shipping confirmation email, and we'll get them out the door right away. Cool. You as well. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Beautiful. That all in there. Probably polish this up before I fully put it away but we'll just tuck it to the side for now. Oh, thank you. This is Alvin saying he wants a ring and a pen. That's right. <laughs> I actually talked about that with my, uh, with my partner. I told her that, I told her that if for some reason, if she proposes to me and not the other way around that I wanted to propose uh, with a fountain pen, it would only be fitting, right? <laughs> Let me see if I can get a good angle here. Awesome. Okay, back to what we were doing. Live ink swatches of Leishla's favorite inks. First up, we have Jacques Herban, 1798 series, the Amethyst de Laurel. I probably mispronounced that, so excuse me. Pardon my French, literally. As you can see here, it's a gorgeous deep purple ink with purple colored flake, which is really cool to see. It's quite a bit to get it fully distributed. So we're just gonna shake it up for a moment here. Let me try to rearrange my little station real quick while I'm at it. Flip this upside down. Hello, welcome in. Awesome. All right. Let's get it, team. Okay. 
Yesterday was National Handwriting Day, by the way. Did you guys celebrate, or uh, were you aware that it was National Handwriting Day? Not aware. That's okay. Uh, I believe World um, World Writing Day or something like that is coming up in June, so there's more opportunities to celebrate with the community. Some other fun holidays to celebrate with the writing community. Um, there is a nationwide stationery store day that happens in the summer as well so that's specifically a holiday that celebrates uh stationery shops small business stationery which is great to see uh they did a good job at supporting us last year with a bunch of freebies to give to our guests so take a look for that of course carrie yeager is also the founder of fountain pen day which happens in november which is Kind of our favorite and only holiday <laughs> specifically for fountain pens so that one is always a ton of fun to check out too uh, this is a dip pen so this is what you would call a pointed pen uh, so basically it's just a super cheap nib holder you can get these online for like two bucks um, you can get them at atlas stationers from the brand called Alays, which also comes with an oblique attachment um, that one's a little bit more premium because of the oblique attachment, but it's nice quality, so you can check that out on atlasstationers.com. All right, let's see. there it's all right we're just gonna keep going oh, that sucks Let's see if I can save this We're just going to keep going. Are the Chinese glass dip pens worth buying? Uh, that's totally a decision for you to make. I would say try to go with a reputable brand. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of good product that comes out of China definitely no reason in the modern world to hate on uh, chinese made products um you just have to do your research and know you know the quality that you're gonna get um i always recommend our store we carry the jacques herban glass dip pens they're not very expensive you know they're like 25 to 30 dollars i think um, and it's a great price point and you know i think they're really nicely designed and they're a little bit more durable um so you should check those out we also have these murano glass dip pens for just 35 dollars that are actually dipped in gold foil so they're really gorgeous really elegant and they come to a nice point out of the box so you don't have to do any additional sanding so i would check that out as well okay let's get this swatch really mix this in well uh do you have a purple ink recommendation that sheen's green yeah uh colorverse crab nebula um that one comes in a two set so you have to buy the matching color but they're gorgeous so nothing to worry about there um i also really like lamy crystal azurite 
that's part of the Lamy Crystal series. So if you look up Lamy Crystal, you can see the full range. And then my favorite purple, uh, like kind of indigo purple with heavy green sheening, it's called Azurite. Awesome. All right, first one down. So this is definitely gonna need some time to dry, but you can already see how gorgeous of a purple ink that this one is. So let's go ahead and just set this one to the side for now to dry. Oh, I missed this question. Julian, uh, if you're still in the chat, um, what are the difficulties to write left-handed using a fountain pen? Um, obviously, one of the main difficulties is your grip style. Um, if you write with a hook grip like most lefties do, you tend to kind of drag your hand across the writing. Um, but you can combat that by using a finer, extra fine nib size and a quick drying ink. Uh, we always recommend Parker Quink in our shop. Um, it's formulated to stay wet in the pen, but dry very quickly as soon as it touches the paper. Um, combine that with a really dry writing pen, like a finer, extra fine, Japanese finer, extra fine, especially, um, and you'll have, you know, still a great writing experience. I used fountain pens like all through high school, all through college. Um, so, you know, the quality is definitely, you have to kind of pay attention to those special features. But outside of that, um, you know, nothing to worry about. Brendan, could you open this box room? All right, next up we have Waringul Path. Taking an early anniversary trip, that's awesome. You should plan it around the sidewalk sale for sure, it's a ton of fun. And uh, the Chicago Air and Water Show happens in the same weekend. So it's a uh, great opportunity to see a lot going on in the city. Um, e. Davis, what did you study in college? Journalism. Yeah, journalism and creative writing. So another shimmering ink, Leishla, we can obviously see has a particular interest in these really fun, gorgeous inks. Let's go ahead and set that upside down while I prep my next swatch. So this is Waringul Path. Uh, my cousin is asking if y'all have any pens that'll work for writing in Arabic. Um, I will say right now that I don't know the particulars of what is required for Arabic writing. Um, but any fountain pen that I, you know, I imagine that any fountain pen that's good for like long-term calligraphy. So a lot of the Western made pens, like German made pens, um, are probably going to be good. Um, but honestly, I'm not really familiar with, with what's kind of required for high quality Arabic writing. Um, but let me know what kind of characteristics are required and I can hopefully make you some recommendations. Do you like the Pilot Custom 823? Absolutely. Definitely one of the best fountain pens in our entire shop. Uh, we also do a, a fountain pen tournament in March. So it's actually coming up relatively soon um, where we have the community kind of compete or vote on um, 64 random fountain pens. And the winner of last year's fountain pen tournament was the Pilot Custom 823. So not only is it one of our favorites in store, but it is one of the community's favorites. So you definitely can't go wrong.
It is, uh, it is literally pen March Madness. We do follow the March Madness schedule. Um, so basically the way it works is we have our customers um, go on our website and we have a web tool, a web app that allows us to um, have all of our customers create their own kind of fantasy style bracket. Um, and once you make your bracket, you follow along week to week with the voting round. So every week we'll actually pit pens against each other in a voting round. And it's just by popular vote. So whichever pen gets the most votes will move on to the next round. And then we give away prizes at the end of every voting round. So whoever's in first place um, at the end of the voting round will get a prize. And then the top 10 overall at the end of everything gets prizes and last year we had an absolutely massive prize pool. I believe it was over $8,000. Our first place prize uh, was the Peniter Psycho, which is about a $3,000 fountain pen that that winner got for free. So definitely sign up, you know, it's free to play. It's a great way to get involved in the community, learn about what everybody's favorite pens are and win potentially some really amazing prizes. Wow, look at this green. So Waringool Path is a very gorgeous yellow green, a very, very earthy kind of mossy green here with gorgeous gold flake, as you guys saw from the bottle. Uh, where do you sign up? Um, once it gets closer to March, you'll find everything you need to know on atlasstationers.com and you'll play the game itself also on atlasstationers.com. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's go ahead and let this one dry as well. And let's move on to another Wearing Ghoul ink. This is Wearing Ghoul Faust. This one's a ton of fun. You guys will like this one. Wearing Ghoul Faust. We love the Parker Duo Fold here as well. Adds to cart. You're gonna go broke before your anniversary. <laughs> I just wanna point out how high quality this black ink is. Sticks to the nibs so well, it's such a wet rider while being very controlled. I think it was muted, but he said that it'll need a long reach. Long reach, as in like the nib is, like a long nib. Sorry, I'm so, uh, I, I really don't know exactly which way to point you, um, but I would highly recommend sending us an email. Uh, you can email us at info at atlasstationers.com and we'll be able to talk uh, a little bit more intimately about what we're looking for. And then I can also, it gives me an opportunity to do some research about uh, Arabic writing. I would love to do that and uh, better help you guys in the community. So just shoot me an email, uh, info at atlasstationers.com um, with your question, and I will be happy to answer that for you. He's still learning English, married into the family. Oh, well, congrats. That's a huge effort to learn English uh, as an adult. Very, very tricky language. So huge props to him for doing that. Are Mont Blancs the best pens available? Uh, depends on who you're asking. I would say no, but maybe. <laughs> it really depends on what you want in a pen, you know? Um, I would say that 
I'm looking for a Mont Blanc 149 hopefully this year. It's been on my list for quite a while, but you know, I it's not my number one pen. Mont Blanc will probably never be my number one brand. I'm definitely a bigger fan of the uh, the handmade uh, Japanese pens. But that's what I'm saying. It's just personal preference. To some people, Mont Blanc is the best, and they're completely valid in that opinion. Some people will never own Mont Blanc, and they're equally valid in that opinion. It really just depends on what you're looking for. In terms of quality, though, Mont Blanc is one of the higher quality brands, without a doubt. Always have to put respect on Mont Blanc's name because they make really good pens. Awesome. Lear, thanks for tuning in. Definitely shoot me that email because I would love to learn a little bit more about Arabic writing and uh, find out how I can help you with pairing a good pen. Take care, though. Yeah, E. Davis made a great point. Each brand seems to have their own positives and negatives. Here is Waringo Faust. I'm definitely gonna let this one dry because it is a high sheener. So we're just gonna keep on keeping on, y'all. Love it when you guys talk to us in the chat though. So keep that up. Appreciate that always. They're looking good, right? <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay, next up we have Diamine Winter Spice. This was uh, last year's, or actually not last year's, two years ago. This was the uh, part of the Diamine Ink Vent calendar. Uh, so every year, or not every year, but um, Diamine basically does an advent calendar where they make 25 brand new ink formulations. This was one of the more popular formulations, Winter Spice, and you'll definitely see why in just a moment. Super unique ink, it's a brown ink with sheening and blue shimmer. So brown ink with blue shimmer. It sounds weird, but give it a shot. Let me show you guys why it's so beautiful here. Shimmer, so yeah, you're almost spot on with the purple. It's, it's more blue though. The uh, Lamy Safari is one of the best of the best for sure. Yeah, you can take any of these. Thank you. Thank you, Leishla. Thank you. Awesome. Oh yeah, some of my Grail pens that I acquired, Davis, um, it took me literally a decade to find a couple of them. So definitely I agree with this statement. The buy the limited ones when you know you want it. You know, I have a funny story about that. When I was in college, I was, um, I think I was a freshman or, yeah, I was a, no, I was actually a sophomore in college. Um, this is definitely going to date me. You guys know exactly how old I am. But uh, when I was some grade in college, um, I really, really wanted the 2016 special edition vanishing point for the year the north american exclusive it was called the vanishing point twilight it was this really gorgeous blue um like a blue metallic finish that had an uh an ombre kind of gradient effect into purple and um you know i was mulling it over for such a long time but um my good friend of mine, Charles, talked me out of it because, you know, we kind of agreed that at the end of the day, I got to feed myself uh, since I was a broke college student. So I opted not to buy the pen. And, you know, it was definitely the right move at the time. I definitely would have not been able to afford $260 for a pen as a college student. Um, but I'll tell you what, if you try to look for that pen right now on eBay or any other gray market, it averages around like $2,000 to $2,500 used for that 
uh, Pilot Vanishing Point Twilight. And again, it was $260 when it was brand new. So uh, the FOMO has really got me there. That is probably my biggest regret in terms of not buying a limited edition. Uh, but you know what? It's okay. I didn't need it. I'm hurting though, because that would have been a great investment. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. You have a bone to pick with the fountain pen community. Let's hear it. I want to hear the. I want to hear the tea. Dupont Armors of Tomorrow and Conway Stewart Kingsman nowhere to nowhere to be found through reputable sources. Yeah, the Conway Stewart especially is going to be hard to look for. Dupont Armors of Tomorrow, though, I'm curious about that one. You could always try reaching out to Coles of London just to see if they maybe have a place. Years. You tried? Oh man, he tried for you too. That sucks that you couldn't find it. But there's always hope, man. It took me 10 years to find uh, my Grail pen, the Pilot Mayu, or the yeah, the Pilot um, the Pilot M90. The Pilot Mayus aren't that hard to find, but the Mayus are definitely hard to find. Or the M90, Jesus, the M90s are hard to find. I also achieved one of my other grail pens last year. It was the Nakaya Decapod Twist. I was going to save up for one because they typically cost, you know, over over $1,000 for a Decapod Twist. Um, but I was able to find one through a mutual friend, uh, bought it on my behalf on Virtual Pen Show. So I was able to get it for just six twenty five, dollars I think. 625 or 675 i can't remember now but it was a killer deal compared to a brand new one and uh i probably will never spend money on fountain pens again because it's quite expensive for me fall out of love with big pens lear it was about time it was only a matter of time there's nothing to write home about when it comes to a bit crystal <laughs> So here is Dye Mine Winter Spice. I'm going to go ahead and keep letting these dry so that you guys can see the full finished swatch. And we're just going to keep going. Make sure we have enough time to do them all. Here we have Ferris Wheel Press Dusk and Bloom. This is an absolutely gorgeous, dusty, kind of um, periwinkle blue purpley deal i don't know exactly what to call it periwinkle is probably the most apt descriptor as you can see here the label dusk and bloom 38 millimeters gorgeous ferris wheel press foil work on the front I got my Waterman Serenity black that has been adjusted to fix the nib housing leakage. That's awesome. Those Serenities are so sick. I actually just got my first Waterman at a uh, at a um, an antique shop in Chicago. I got one of the uh, Waterman Karens in coral orange. Um, I got that pen and a Lamy Artist. Um, the Lamy Artist is the predecessor to the Lamy 2000. Uh, the Lamy Artist that I got in particular, I believe it was like a 54 or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, but the Lamy that I got was the predecessor to the Lamy 2000. So it's really cool to have that piece in my collection. Squatch Trek. I thought when you were, or I was uh, waiting for you to join, man. What's going on? Good to see you, good to see you. How's your day been going? at work how's your day my day's been going good 
Uh, I'm working right now, so as you can see, I'm not very busy. <laughs> I guess you could say that this is very busy, though, because I can't be distracted. Dusk and bloom. What's a good investment pen today, please? Uh, I can't really say that even in an unofficial capacity because there is no way to know uh, how a pen's value is going to change. Um, what I would say just generally, looking for limited edition items that sell out very quickly or you know are gonna be super popular in the community. Um, usually the lower the number, the better, or just the more unique the number. If you can get triples or doubles, depending on how many quantity there is, uh, that's always a good way to kind of hold the value of a pen. Um, but otherwise there's really no way to tell, man, you know, they're like the pilot vanishing point example I gave earlier, you know, that pen has increased in value immensely, you know, valuing now for a used item at over $2,000. But if you look at like the pilot vanishing point links special edition, those basically are still retail value. So they haven't lost value, which is great, but they have not gained in value whatsoever. And they probably never will, you know, unless they just somehow all disappear from the earth and they become super rare which is something I definitely doubt. Um, but that's just, you know, there's no way to know for sure what's going to be popular and what's not going to be popular. So I definitely can't make any recommendations for pens that you should invest in. Uh, what I'll say ultimately is you should buy pens because you want them for yourself. See you, Davis. Good. F Thanks for tuning in, brother. Awesome. Here is Ferris wheel press dusk and bloom. Let me switch the lighting real quick because this swatch does not look accurate. There we go. A little bit cooler tone. So this one's a gorgeous periwinkle, kind of light, baby bluish almost. Really gorgeous ink. Once again, we're going to go ahead and let that dry all the way. And I've got two more inks to swatch. So we're almost done, team. The fact that I, after one hit with a fountain pen, I was addicted. <laughs> one hit. You shouldn't say it like that. <laughs> That's a funny way to put it, though. I was the same way, man. Uh, what got me into fountain pens was literally a $5 little calligraphy stub pen from Michaels. It was just the cheapest crap pen for like five bucks and it made me completely fall in love with the idea of fountain pens my first official fountain pen was the twisby diamond 580 um and yeah i never looked back after that literally only use fountain pens to this day you'll never catch me riding with a rollerball or ballpoint unless i have to Nero, good stuff. Dusk and Bloom is truly gorgeous. Next up here, I have a Roshizuku Sukiyo, a very popular blue-black, a dark teal, if you will, from Pilot. I love writing this name, Roshizuku. A lot of fun. had a bit of an overflow there. Sukio. Just started my collection. What's a good travel case for three to four pens? Yeah, I would highly recommend looking at um, 
Galen Leather on our website. We're very low on Galen Leather right now, but we should be restocking in the next month or two. Um, so if you don't see what you want in stock, go ahead and sign up for those restock notifications. It's definitely worth the wait. Galen Leather is 100% um, full grain Turkish leather that is entirely handmade in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, super high quality product. And it's definitely, you know, a pen case for a lifetime. So I would check out Galen Leather. If you are looking for something now, I would definitely look at Girologio, uh, Girologio on our website or uh, D. Charles. Um, there's a whole section on our website for cases. So I would start there. Um, any of the brands that we carry are, are good. problem thanks for the question all right let me double check if i missed anything no all right so that was sukio from Maroshizuku. this bottle in particular is our dealer bottle so only only retailers can get this if you guys are curious but an absolutely gorgeous dark blue black as you can see in the text there you get a beautiful blue black with red sheening so this right here will probably sheen, so we're gonna go ahead and let it dry. Need to order a swatch book um, and swatch my inks. Not sure why I haven't done that yet. Eh, there's no rules, man. I haven't even swatched my inks that I have, so whatever. You know, I swatch them all here at the shop, so I know what they all look like. And obviously I use them, so I know what they look like. It is a great resource though, to just know all the inks that you have in one little book. I would highly recommend picking up on your next order from us the coloring standard book. It's a hundred swatches on a on a just a, a ring. Super convenient to use, really easy to just hang up in your writing desk uh, or wherever you store your pens and inks. Um, and the paper that we use for our swatches is the same exact paper. Oh my god, uh, are the same exact paper that we use. Um, God, what am I saying? It is the same exact paper that coloring uses. <laughs> there we go, I got it. Um, so if you like the way that our swatches look, you'll definitely love coloring. Uh, I hate to be negative, but brands and pens to avoid. <laughs> Whatever we don't carry here at Atlas, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't really answer that one on the live stream. I would say um, just really be particular in the pens that you pick out. Um, you know, really try to understand why you like the pens that you like in terms of material, weight, size, and then just go for stuff that doesn't have bad reviews. You know, it's just a good rule of thumb for buying stuff in life. Uh, but yeah, I, I unfortunately cannot answer that, even though I'm super opinionated about the fountain pens in this world. I'm actually one of the most opinionated guys in the shop, I think. Sometimes my opinions um, are not agreed with. <laughs> but uh, I can't say anything on the live stream, so I'm not going to say anything. Astronomy nerd fact, there is a beautiful double star on the Cygnus constellation. The constellation's right here. Where is it this? Or is it this main star right here? Uh, let me spin this over again. So Colorverse Alpha Cygni is a gorgeous light blue with flake, as you guys can see in that bottle here. Absolutely gorgeous. It settles quite quickly, though, so I'm going to have to try to make this swatch quickly as well. Ooh, that might have been my best time writing color verse ever. Look at that. Oh, that's a little bit open. The spacing is a little bit off now that I look at it, but whatever. It's still really good. I'm proud of myself. Okay, Alpha. 
Signy. You had to sign a paper for your dentist back in the third grade. Did he hand you a fountain pen? That's awesome. Good on that dentist. It's at the end of the long arm, not the arm, but the body. This one right here, these two. All right, this is the last swatch that I'll be doing. And then we're gonna show them all off. Let's try to get a healthy amount of shimmer in this watch here. These are Laishla's favorite inks, so I wanna make the swatches beautiful. Awesome. The ink was a beautiful Sakura pink with a subtle green to it. Ooh, maybe one of the Sailors, uh, Sailor Manyo, I believe. Sounds like it at least. All right, so that was all the swatches. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the two swatches that we couldn't do. So these are Leishla's favorite inks of all time. Starting out, we have the beautiful Waringul Macbeth. Part of their literature series, Waringul has a ton of inks based on famous written works. Macbeth here is a gorgeous gray, kind of slate blue with silver flake. Just look at how gorgeous that is. Let's zoom in a little bit. Wow. Next up here, we have Colorverse Felicet. Part of their science kind of themed inks. This uh, ink is based on some sort of scientific uh, thing. <laughs> That's as much as I can say about it, sorry. Really nice, like hot red pink. It's not like really a hot pink, it's kind of more reddish. But a gorgeous gold flake all throughout. This one's out of stock right now, same with Macbeth. That's why I couldn't swatch them live. But if you like these inks, definitely sign up for the restock notifications because we're going to have them every day. You just got to wait for the restock. Awesome. Okay, next up we have our first swatch. This is Jacques Herban Amethyst de Laurel. This is a gorgeous royal purple with a green sheen and purple colored flake. The flake itself ends up looking a little bit more silver than purple, I think, uh, but it is purple flake. Uh, e. Davis, technically uh, not like a, a library library, um, but if you go to the bottled inks on our website, all of them should be photos of our swatches. Uh, what I do is I, I make the swatches and then I photograph them all. Um, using a, a Sony a7R 3 so it's a super high uh, resolution photo that is 100% color accurate. Um, and then we upload them on the website as is once they're finished kind of being touched up and the colors are, are perfected um, in terms of recreation. So if you go to just the ink bottles on our website, uh, you'll see the swatches and those are, those are a great resource. I would say make sure that you're viewing it properly you know you want to make sure that you're on a color accurate screen if you're on like an iphone or macbook you're pretty much good to go just make sure that you have any sort of night light or color shift mode turned off good question though okay next up we have leishla's wearing ghoul path an absolutely gorgeous yellow green with a lot of gold flake you can see here that the sheen is almost black with the shading. 
you can technically call that sheen, but it is just a heavy shader ink. Gets quite dark. Absolute gorgeous amount of gold flake. Next up here, we have Diamine Winter Spice. Can you see why this is such a unique ink? It's a brown ink with green sheen and blue flake. A super unique combination of colors and sheening and shimmering, but it just looks so right. It's just so gorgeous. It really reminds me of like a spiced wine or kind of just a nice cinnamon dusted drink. Uh, Lear, soak it. Soak it for a couple hours, just in cool water. Never use warm or hot water, just cold water. Uh, but basically take a uh, take a cup of cold water and just soak the nib unit um, for that Lamy in there for a couple hours. Rinse it out really well and it should be good to go. The Sheen ink's worth it for fine pens. In the past, it feels like they don't show um, and are better in thicker nibs. Uh, Eric, I would say yes. Um, ink, sheening inks are worth it in fine pens. It just depends on what pen and what paper. Uh, a good way to think about fountain pens is that the paper, the ink, and the pen are all equally important to maximizing the properties. So if you're using a fine pen, use a wetter writing fine and use a paper that is not absorbent. The less absorbent the paper, um, the more sheen that you're going to get out of the ink. So it really doesn't matter the nib size at all. It just matters on how absorbent the uh, paper is and how wet the pen is. Here we have Wearing Gold Faust. As you can see, it's super interesting. This is a straight black ink, but you can see we get just like the slightest purple hues right here where it's quite light and everywhere else it's just straight up green. So this is a black ink with heavy, heavy green sheening. Just gives you like this full metallic effect, which is very, very awesome. Look at that. All righty. Next up, we have Ferris Wheel Press, Dusk and Bloom, a very gorgeous baby blue, kind of into the periwinkle a little bit. Decent shader, actually. And you can see just the slightest little bit of sheening. I would not call this a sheening ink, though. That's really just because this is pretty heavily saturated over here. This right here is kind of a more accurate representation of the color. Just absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, simple colors. All right, next up we have Orochizuku Sukiyo, a gorgeous blue-black with heavy red sheening. Not heavy, heavy, but decent. Sometimes it feels like you need an Atlas knows all page with answers to all these questions. We're actually working on a kind of resource um, that will kind of FAQ resource page for that very reason, because uh, I find myself answering the same questions uh, a billion times every week, uh, along with the rest of my team. We're never, never, you know, uh, upset about doing it. You know, Fountain Pens is a very niche hobby. There's not a ton of good resources on the internet. And like everything else on the internet, there's a ton of misinformation about Fountain Pens. So we're always happy to answer your questions, uh, but we are working on, um, we are working on that. Uh, yeah, Oroshi Zuku. You're familiar with this for sure, at least the brand, but Oroshi Zuku is a premium tier of Pilot Ink. Yeah. Hi, welcome. All right, and last up, this ink is still a little bit wet, but I got to show it off. Uh, we have Colorverse Alpha Signe, an absolutely beautiful baby blue with heavy blue shimmer. Look at all that shimmering, especially in the uh, text there. Look at how healthy that shimmering is. Really gorgeous blue ink. Heavy, heavy sheening. Or not sheening, shimmering. We used to carry the products many years ago, but I had gotten it before. Yeah, it's just one of the brands that we don't currently carry. Okay. Look at that. If you want, you know, those compatibles do really well. Let's go ahead. 
And do one last pan here. It's actually the lead refill company yeah. in the world. Um, they actually are the ones responsible for like sourcing like every major refill, uh, like sure, like staples. Yeah, so they make gorgeous. All right, let me uh get this remounted real quick, y'all. Yeah, great head brand. All right. So that was Tuesdays with Alvin. Thank you for the people that stayed until the very, very end. It means the world to me and the Atlas team uh, that you guys show us so much support on our social media. Um, as always, I go live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Central Time, usually a couple minutes late. <laughs> uh, so you can always tune in on Tuesdays and check me out. Um, I definitely want to remind everyone to check out everything you've seen today on atlasstationers.com. If you guys are looking to make a purchase, use the discount code TikTok and you get 10% off your whole order. Uh, exceptions do apply, so keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, uh, I think next week, next, next Tuesday is the 31st, right? Um, next Tuesday, I'm actually going to be doing a Valentine's special stream um, to get everybody prepared for Valentine's Day. I'm going to be showing off my favorite stationery, my favorite kind of ink combinations um, for writing love letters. Um, yeah, so definitely tune in for that on next Tuesdays with Alvin. Once again, thank you guys. And I will see you soon.